The world of Dark Souls modding is an interesting one, because the mods tend towards the large overhaul style, and although all three games get them, uh, Dark Souls 3 tends to have the largest number to try overall. Although Dark Souls is a masterfully crafted experience with tons of attention to detail and very particular balance and design, it's still fun to try out mods for them once you're really familiar with each game. Uh, they'll never be as well balanced or finely crafted as the base game, we're talking about a series crafted by hundreds of skilled people under the eye of a director with tons of fantastic stuff under his belt and a budget of millions of dollars. Uh, mods won't improve the games, but they will make them a different experience, and that's really what they're about. Uh, if you've never played one, always play it vanilla first. That's the way it's meant to be played, the intended experience. But these mods often build on that familiarity, working with your knowledge of the games, their enemy and bonfire placements, balance and intended progression paths, to give you a different experience. I recently completed a couple of 100% playthroughs of some mods, and I wanted to highlight this one in particular, The Convergence, because I've been really impressed with it. I was originally going to cover Cinders as well, but my playthrough of that was like over 30 versions ago, and I found that it's been moving farther and farther away from the things I liked about it and amplifying things I dislike about it, so I don't really feel the need to cover that one anymore, not at this point. Although I will make a couple of comparisons to it here and there because it's the most popular of these DS3 mods by far and it might help people. Uh, also, just before we start, there's something I wanted to make clear. Uh, anything I say I dislike is a very personal preference, and I'm not trying to, like, poop on mod creators or anything. The beautiful thing about modding is that it's very individual. You decide what you install and why, so hopefully I give enough reason behind the things that I dislike so that whether or not you agree with me, you understand why I feel that way. But me saying I don't like an aspect of something doesn't mean I think it's an objectively bad idea or something. I don't get to decide that. The modders can create whatever kind of experience they want. I just want to draw attention to one that I enjoyed. Uh, these are large mods with tons of changes. It's rare that you'll personally like every single change. It's more about finding more things that you enjoy than things that you don't, and appreciating the different experience the mod gives you as a whole. So what the heck is the convergence? Let's get into the larger gameplay changes before we talk about the more specific details. Uh, the first change you'll notice is that there are tons of new starting classes, like loads of them, around 20 new ones, allowing for different starts, many of which have some neat combinations of equipment and spells, some of them being things that were originally very late game equipment. Uh, but the balance and scaling has changed, so starting with those might not be as overpowered as you think at first. For instance, the class I started with is the Izalith Legionnaire, a pyromancy using uh, Dex Int Faith build that actually starts with the Demon Scar, something you normally have to wait almost the entire game to get originally, and uh, there are plenty more fun ones to start with. I should mention that uh, one of the focuses of this mod is the magic system. It changes it in a lot of different ways, but it's not exclusively a magic mod, and there are plenty of other changes that a non-magic using character can benefit from. I mentioned scaling changes, and there are loads of those, with pretty much every weapon, both vanilla and newly added ones, having redone scaling and stats no longer soft cap at around 40 or 50, so you can easily increase them much higher than that and still see plenty of benefit, uh, meaning your character is capable of much higher damage now. But the enemy's health has been altered as well to compensate, and this is where I have to give props to the Convergence team. One thing I can't personally stand that some mods do is assume difficulty is just placing a thousand unfitting enemies around everywhere with like 12 times the normal health and pretend that that's a challenge. I just find that really obnoxious and counter to the idea of how these games work in general, so I like that this mod changes the health totals but doesn't go overboard, because yes, you are stronger, but enemies don't become massive, boring sponges that you need to backstab like eight times to kill either. Another big change is the reinforcement system. There are new materials and types of titanite for each damage type. Uh, fire weapons, for instance, use a new resource called smoldering stones. Dark weapons use murky sediment, etc. until they get to plus five, at which point they use the new titanite types. Uh, fire needs molten titanite, magic needs crystal titanite, and there are even new kinds for unique and boss weapons. Uh, they still use both twinkling titanite and titanite scales, as in vanilla, but then they transition to the new metallic titanite at plus 5 and above, meaning every weapon can now be reinforced to plus 10, even the boss stuff that normally stopped at plus 5. Another new system that links into this are the huge number of new covenants and their vendors. Covenants now take the form of small bonuses you get when equipping their item, as well as each one allowing enemies to drop those new materials in addition to their normal drops. The covenant I started with boosts pyromancy damage by 5% and allows enemies to drop those smoldering stones I was talking about, for example. And there are like two dozen new covenants now, each with their own bonuses and currency drops, and yes, there are several for non-magic users as well. 
the new vendors accept these new currencies and can convert them into a tier 2 currency for further upgrades. Uh, for instance, Cornix the Pyromancer can take five of those smoldering stones and turn them into a Chaos Remnant, the tier 2 pyro currency, which you can spend on new spells, armors, and weapons, and each of these vendors and covenants has a system like this, where you can gather a tier 1 currency and convert it into a new one for greater rewards. Uh, there are even late game covenants that give bigger boosts and make enemies directly drop the tier 2 currency instead, to cut down on uh, farming in the late game. For instance, the tier 2 Pyromancy Covenant boosts all sources of fire damage, not just pyromancies, and makes enemies drop Chaos Remnants directly. This vastly fills out the Covenant system with tons of new stuff to work for, and loads of new build possibilities. Another new thing related to all of this are the new Remains items that you get from killing bosses in addition to their other drops. There are four kinds, from Hollow's Remains all the way up to Champion's Remains that late bosses drop, and uh, you can take these to any of those vendors to trade for the new Titanite varieties, uh, saving your Champion's Remains and 40,000 souls for one of the new slabs to make a plus 10 weapon of your choice. Um, this is also why there is a boss refighting mechanic, something that Cinders does as well, that's always a fun idea, where the tutorial boss Bonfire gets a bunch of statues surrounding it representing the bosses, which look pretty cool. Uh, once you reach that boss and beat them, a torch will light up on the statue and you can interact with it to fight them again. You won't get another copy of their soul this way, only once per new game cycle does that happen, but you get the loose souls and the remains they drop again each time, so it's good for gathering upgrade materials. But now we reach the real meat of the mod, the finer details of all the changes they made. Uh, the first one you have to mention is the massively overhauled magic system, with tons of new spells. Each of the three types of magic are now divided into four schools, all doing different damage types and having different focuses. Uh, the main purpose of these new vendors is to sell the new schools of spells. You actually need the original four spell vendors to make use of all the new ones as well, Carla, Cornix, Irina, and Orbeck, and there are new warps in the shrine to access them immediately if you don't want to wait to find them. And uh, they've also been moved around a little bit and put in cells that are locked from the outside, like how Grey Rat and Irina normally are, so you can't sequence break with these warps. They just allow you to grab them early, and then you got a homeward bone back afterwards. Here are the new schools of magic you'll be seeing. Some of them are expanded from spells that were in vanilla, but all of them feature new stuff regardless. Miracles are broken into lightning miracles, the classic standard ones that you'll be familiar with, holy miracles, which do physical damage and knockback, think force and wrath of the gods, but even more of them, uh, blood miracles, which do dark damage and focus on bleeding effects, draining HP from enemies, it's expanded from spells like gnaw in vanilla, and uh, necromancy, which does magic damage, has a lot of damage over time effects, and focuses on summoning minions, interestingly enough. Sorcery has crystal sorcery, the standard magic damage stuff we all know. Aromancy, a new physical damage set of spells. Hexes, an expanded dark damage spell set with lots of homing spells and the ability to inflict curse. And light sorcery, which are lightning damage and utility spells expanded from the Ulysseal sorceries in vanilla. Finally, we have Pyromancies, which feature the standard fire damage pyro spells. Cryomancies, which do dark damage and feature the old black fire spells, as well as new ice related ones. Geomancy, which houses physical damage and poison stuff like boulder heave and toxic mist, as well as plenty of new ones. And Druidism, which uses a pretty green flame and does magic damage, has lots of damage over time effects, some healing, and a good amount of nature themed summoned minions. In addition to all of this, there are also new super spells, around 3 to 5 for each of those 12 new schools. Uh, you get these from trading those tier 2 covenant items at each vendor, and they're really strong and really fun to use, from the purple colored moon sorceries to stuff like Chaos Beam and the Return of Forbidden Sun. They're super cool, but have very high costs, and also usually have stat requirements up around 70 to 75 to compensate for their power. There are also new super armors and weapons available at these vendors, which work in the new themes of each of them, and uh, all the armors in this mod, the vanilla and newly added ones, have set bonuses. So this is something that I loved from Cinders that I was sad they took out. It adds even more build variety, and every armor piece having new bonuses and stats tied to it is something I always think is pretty cool. Uh, there are also many new rings, mostly dealing with amplifying damage types, given there are so many new ways to focus on each one. Um, FP also regenerates now naturally, so spells and weapon arts can be used a lot more. This goes for enemies as well, something to note. Uh, what about world changes? Well, this mod makes quite a few changes to the world, new and remixed enemy patrols, new loot locations, and even some entirely new level geometry in some places. You'll start to notice these changes right away, as pretty much every area has new enemy placements, most of which I actually liked. 
Now, you'll also find new bridges connecting areas that were previously separate, making your paths through familiar areas a bit different this time around. Uh, there are also a couple of warps, like one between Smoldering Lake and Irithyll Dungeon, as well as several others often focused on later game areas. Uh, I found the new enemy placements weren't cheap or obnoxious and mostly focused on remixing rather than overloading areas with new enemies. Uh, of particular note to me in this regard is Fair and Keep, an area that I personally hate as it's just a flat, boring swamp that can be oddly confusing to navigate at times. Now, I've seen some other mods tackle this area before, with Cinders, in my opinion, making it even worse and more annoying than the vanilla version, with tons of ridiculous new enemy placements and some huge groups so close to bonfires that the second you stood up from resting or teleporting, you would immediately be assaulted by like five basilisks, filling the previously safe room with curse guests. It was just a really poorly designed aspect of that mod in my view, so seeing it here done much better than that is nice. A smaller concentration of Elder Grew, but still having them present, the ability to run in the swamp, of course, and some new bridges and ladders that make getting from one side of the swamp to the other less of a confusing tangle are all nice changes. I don't personally like the new Abyss Watcher enemies. I think it's weird fighting them before their actual boss fight. It's clear their moveset doesn't work well outside the arena, and lore-wise, I also don't like the inclusion of them just standing around in the swamp. It's also weird they don't really count as dead when killed and don't give souls, probably a technical limitation highlighting that they really don't belong outside their boss fight, but it's a small part of an otherwise well thought out change to an area. Another area of note to me is Irithyll. It has an entire extra section built into the side of the level with all new platforms, ladders, bridges, pathways, and enemy encounters. And although it might look a bit clumsy here and there because some of these changes stand out as odd looking where there was previously nothing there to see, now, I'm just impressed that they were able to add so much new geometry at all, given the technical limitations of the mod tools that are available. I think it's pretty cool that Irithyll has basically an entire new second half to explore and loot. Uh, you'll see all sorts of changes like this, even down into the Profaned Capital, and as late as some new ladders and paths in the Ringed City itself. So it's a pretty comprehensive set of level design changes just to mix up a familiar experience a bit, which I think is really ambitious given the limitations and a neat set of ideas. Even if I found some of the individual changes odd, it's just cool how much was done in the first place. What about bosses? Uh, there are some serious changes for some of these too, which is always a dangerous thing given how much of a focus boss fights are. Altering them is always inviting a lot of criticism, but hey, the point of the mod is to provide a somewhat different, unfamiliar playthrough, so let's look at what's changed in terms of bosses. Gunder is no longer the boss in the Cemetery of Ash or the Untended Graves. The tutorial boss is now a fire-imbued Pontus beast called the Watchdog of Firelink, and although it's nowhere as good of a tutorial as the multi-phased Iodex Gunder was, mods are built for people that don't need that tutorial, so that's kind of irrelevant. It's a pretty easy boss, but it does the job as the first one you'll encounter. Uh, the new boss in the Untended Graves is far more interesting, however. It's called the Vessel of Koth. It's a dark, imbued stray demon, but the really neat bit is that it's actually a two-phase battle, with an entirely new boss rising in the middle of the arena and making the whole thing a pretty memorable, fun replacement boss fight. I actually quite liked it. Uh, Gunder is now in the boss chamber of Osiris, the Consumed King, where he works the same as he did as Iodex, but with some newly imbued attacks, mimicking what he was thought to have maybe been like in the earlier versions of Dark Souls 3 when he was seen in that arena instead. And Osiris himself has been moved to the Grand Archives as a mini-boss enemy you'll face near the end, uh, before that three NPC gank squad. Uh, many other bosses have some extra projectiles and some small additions to their attacks, as well as having more health. Uh, the Champion's Grave Tender has also been replaced, which seems to be a popular thing to do. Cinders did it as well, but Cinders' replacement, the Remnants of Lordran, was a complete waste of time, in my opinion, being yet another Dark Souls 1 callback, as if the game didn't have enough of those already. It was also super easy and felt kind of unfinished, as the bosses didn't really do much. It was also really lore-unfriendly, as there is no reason Kieran and Artorias would be in the painting, except to stoke those tired, fan-appeasing flames. But in the Convergence, it's replaced with the Master of the Depths, a frost-imbued crow wielding the crow's quills weapons, and the Great Wolf shows up in the usual way as well halfway through. It's an okay fight, but not as interesting as the Grave Tender was, given that it's just another crow enemy that you've already fought several of, but at least it was relatively fun and didn't make me want to immediately forget it even happened, like the Cinders one did. In the Ringed City, Half-Light is replaced with King Alant from Demon's Souls for some reason, using a wind elemental version of the Pontiff Sullivan moveset. 
This is another one that kind of fell flat for me, where I felt it was replacing a rather interesting fight with a less enjoyable one, but again, personal preference, and I definitely wouldn't say that they were bad bosses. I have respect for the team just wanting to try new things and pulling them off pretty well. There are also plenty of new invaders, and although I don't personally like naming them after streamers and speedrunners, I do like the way they handled how they fight. It's an easy temptation to just give them tons of health and pretend that that's a challenge, but instead what they did is make battles with them very lethal. Uh, they can kill you quickly, and they use many of the new items, weapons, and spells, but you can also kill them quickly, so combat with them turns into a dance of dodging and trading and feels a lot like PvP, actually, rather than wailing on an overly tanky but boring enemy forever, which I definitely want to give the team credit for. They made the new NPCs really fun to fight. There are also some new enemies called Champions that you'll find around the place, denoted by a gold pillar of light coming off of them. These are rare enemies that don't respawn and have a lot of health and improved attacks and spells but drop really good stuff on their defeats. I, I really like what they did with the new attacks. For instance, there is a champion evangelist outside of the Cathedral of the Deep that uses some new blood miracles and has their fire grab thingy replaced with a crazy looking bleed insect grab. It's actually really neat and I like the creativity in giving these enemies themed attacks. And the souls of a greater foe they drop can also be transposed into a new set of unique rings called shells that do a whole bunch of different things in one slot, making them very flexible and powerful, but you can only equip one shell at a time. Uh, there's enough of them to have one that fits well for just about every type of build. Uh, there's also a new alchemy system that allows you to use reagents and greater reagents dropped from the champions as well as uh, by using their respective covenants to craft consumables at any bonfire. From the vanilla consumables to all new ones like potions for restoring HP and FP, uh, buffing potions that enhance soul gain and item discovery for a while, combat potions to increase damage against specific enemy types, and loads of new consumables like multiple bombs for every damage type, as well as pacifying and even mind control of bombs. Uh, there's tons of new variety in the consumables thanks to this alchemy system, and when you combine that with some of the new bonuses and the way the new luck stat scaling works, uh, consumable-focused builds are actually viable now if you want to try one. Although there are some changes I might not like, like renaming the Nameless King into Faram, which I feel kind of goes against the show-don't-tell philosophy of Dark Souls, some of the new enemy placements like the aforementioned Abyss Watchers and the Swamps, and the way friendly summons have been made entirely useless due to having drastically nerfed health. Even that masterful tank known as Night Slayer Sorig died uh, like less than a quarter of the way through the old Demon King boss fight. I still think there's some really impressive stuff here. There's a lot to try out and enjoy, and the new variety and viable items and builds, and especially the new massive variety in spells, makes this a really fun mod that's absolutely worth trying out. It's a really impressive effort, and if you've played a lot of DS3 and you're looking for that fresh experience to tide you over a little longer while waiting for Elden Ring, the Convergence is a really safe bet to occupy at least one playthrough with. Uh, we all want to recapture that first blind playthrough, forget what we know about Dark Souls just so we can experience it again for the first time. And although we can't really do that, mods like this are a really fun way to recapture that sense of wanderlust, exploring something unfamiliar and new. Even though it might not be entirely new, it'll definitely be different in a lot of ways that make it feel pretty fresh. Uh, I'll link you to the Nexus page down in the description if you want to check this mod out for yourself. There's much more than I could show in just one playthrough for you to find. And if you're worried about getting banned, uh, it comes with a pre-configured mod engine INI that'll make sure to disable the connection features by default, so you can decide if you want to disable that and co-op yourself. So thank you guys very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.